I have another low carb or a ketogenic meal that I want to share with you today. This time it is peanut butter bread. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay, yes, peanut butter bread is not actually a meal. It's something that goes with a meal. Now you can look at this two ways. You can look at this as a bread that you might have with butter, make a sandwich out of, I guess, or you might look at it as a loaf, something like a dessert. And that's the way I look at this because I do add my zero calorie sweetener to it. So it is more of a dessert loaf or something that I can have alongside or after a meal. So what is it? Well, it, the recipe couldn't be any simpler. It is basically eggs, peanut butter, a little bit of bacon powder and my sweetener. That's it, that's the whole thing. Now, of course, I will give you the full recipe in the video description below, as well as a link to a video where I first found this recipe on. But of course, I'm gonna be cooking it in the woods. Now, why am I interested in this one so much? Well, if you're on the keto uh, lifestyle or you're looking at low carb cooking, you probably are aware of what's known as mug cakes. Mug cakes often are made in the microwave at home, 60 to 90 seconds, a couple of ingredients whipped up in a mug, put in the microwave, and you've got a dessert, almost an instant dessert. Delicious, easy to make, you can't beat them. But how can you replicate that out in the woods? So I, when I came across this recipe and the person who made the video talked about an alternate way of cooking, which is basically wet baking, which we already do out in the woods quite often, at least I do, then I gave it a try at home and it turned out just like the microwave mug cake did. So I was quite excited to bring it to you. But of course, I'm going to be doing this out in the woods over a gas stove just a little bit different. All right, let's go down to the ground where I have my kitchen set up. I'll put it together for you and we'll start cooking. All right, this will be such an easy thing to put together. It, it really, as I mentioned, it's just eggs, peanut butter, uh, my sweetener and some baking powder. So uh, let's get started. So what I'm doing right now is I have to take the eggs and not whip them, but just uh, combine them, you know, kind of give them a little combining together. So I'll put two eggs. Now the pot or the bowl, I guess it's a pot that I'm putting them in, is my Sea to Summit X-Series pot, the 1.4 liter pot. I am also going to be cooking in this, but I'm going to be wet baking. It's just, uh, I was trying to think of the best way to do this. So I'm going to use this as my mixing bowl and I'll pour everything into another bowl for the wet baking, but this will become the bottom of my cooking. So this is what the water will be boiling or simmering in with another pot inside of it. All right, so it didn't take a whole lot to bring the eggs together. I got more pine needles falling out of trees here. And now, of course, I dump my spoon inside. So peanut butter, all right, so eggs, peanut butter. Now, to make this a ketogenic, or low carb meal, you need to use natural peanut butter that has no sugar added. And the nice thing is when you bring it out on a warm day, it's already quite liquid. Not a lot of work necessary to put it together. I think a little spatula or a little silicone spatula, but I'm good to empty this out with. But, mm, I love peanut butter. Okay, once again, I'm just gonna mix that together. Now, you're gonna get a batter, a batter like you might for a cake or muffins, maybe even not as thick as even muffins, more like a liquid cake batter. All right, that's combining. Can you see that now? You can see how that's combining? So now I'm ready to add in my other ingredients. So the sweetener is optional, the baking powder not so much. So I've broken the recipe down to a smaller amount. The full-size recipe calls for six eggs or six egg whites, depending if you, if you want to use just the egg whites, and a full cup of peanut butter. I'm using a third of a cup of peanut butter, two eggs, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. That's a fair amount of baking powder, but you need it to, to give it the lift and the airiness that it's going to have when it's finished. And I've got about a tablespoon of sweetener. And just a little shake of salt. That was the only other thing that often helps when you put these things together. Now, I'm really gonna wish I had 
a spatula or something, but I'll do my best. I have a spoon that I can use. In fact, I think I'll switch over to the spoon now. Hmm. You know, how easy is this? That's, that's basically it. I'm all mixed through. Everything is mixed and ready to go on to the next stage, which is the wet baking. But I'll have to set it up. But I can put it, transfer it into my baking utensil, which is my X-Series bowl. Now, full admission here. I meant to bring out some parchment paper so that I could cut a circle of parchment paper to put in the bottom of the bowl to ensure that the cake or the loaf or the bread doesn't stick to it. I did that the other day using the same one at home. It worked perfectly. I forgot to bring it. It doesn't stick to the silicone anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. I don't know that it will stick to the bottom of this plastic material, but I'm just going to see if I can give it a little bit of insurance to keep it from sticking. So I've got a little bit of ghee that is getting quite soft here in the warmth. And I'm just going to grease the bottom of this a little bit. All right. Yeah. Gonna need a napkin here for my fingers. Now I've got to get all of this into this bowl. I'm really wishing I had brought out a spatula. So this will easily double inside. So calculate that when you go to cook, that you're going to need something that will allow for the loaf to double, at least double inside, so it doesn't come out over the top. Look at the spoon, best part of it, right? Okay, so I have a couple choices here. This is my, Sea to Summit Sigma 1.9 liter pot. And great, I could be using this. This pot, the X bowl, will fit down inside, but it goes in quite deep down to the bottom. Makes it a little difficult to reach in to get it out. So I've elected not to use this for the baking. I'm going to actually clean this out and use this. It has a lower side. I can get enough water in to, to make this uh, float in it. This is the silicone lid that I bought as a, an addition to the, to the uh, series, and I'll put that on top to keep it uh, water and wetness from getting in onto the cake. I'll put the lid on. I'll put the whole thing on top of the stove. I'll bring the water to a boil, then I'll turn it back to a slow, slow simmer, 20 to 30 minutes. So give me a few minutes. I've got to clean this pot out and we'll get it set up on the stove, and that's when I'll bring it back. All right, it only took me a second to clean my X-Pot out, the 1.4 liter X-Pot out. Uh, what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of water in, make sure, uh, what have I got? Not quite two cups, yeah, not quite two cups. Is that gonna be enough? Absolutely it is. So you can see that my bowl is just floating around inside. I think I'm in my own shadow, creating shadow on it here. So you can see that the bowl is floating around inside. That's, that's okay. Now I'm gonna put the lid on top of the bread. And then I'll put the lid on top of the pot. Now, you can see it is not quite sitting down, but I needed enough water inside of the pot. So as this simmers over the 20 to 30 minutes, that I don't run out of water. So even though the lid is floating loosely now, by the time I'm finished, I will have lost a, as much of the water, or quite a bit of the water, and it, the lid will start to sink down to the level of the pot. I just wanna make sure that I don't run out of water and then have everything stick together. Okay, so the next step is to get it on top of the stove. There we go. I won't turn that up yet until I get the whole pot on top of it. A good chance that I've got leaves and pine needles and everything stuck on the bottom here. And they will smoke if I do. Okay, everything is floating. I can turn that up. 
but as soon as the water comes to a boil, I am going to be turning it down to the lowest, lowest simmer that I can. I can tell you with my experience, it won't take long for this to come to a boil. So there's not much to see now for the next 30 minutes. I'll probably come back just before I take it off of the pot to show you what it looks like inside. And uh, then we'll have to let it cool for a few minutes before I dump it out of the cooking vessel and show you the finished product. So I gave it uh, 25 minutes. I don't think, as long as you don't run out of water, I don't think you can really overcook something when you're steam baking it. Uh, you can undercook it, but I don't think it'll overcook. So how am I gonna get this off? Okay, ooh, I don't know. Clean there, it looks wet in the middle. Eh, it may be a little wet in the middle. I think I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes. And you can see that the water is just barely bubbling. I'm gonna turn the heat up. I don't want it to bubble too, too much. I think I'll leave the lid right off, in fact. It didn't take much to raise the heat. I don't want to run out of water in the, uh, the X pot. That's too much. I'll turn it back down a little bit. Man, you, this is so fine. You can go down so low, you think it's off. All right, maybe five more minutes. I'll check it again. And then if it's ready, I'll take it off because I've got to get this on for coffee or get my kettle on for coffee. All right, I did give it a, just a couple of more minutes and it occurred to me probably what had happened is um, if water gets on, like steam gets under here and I can see that it did, it will condense and drop into the cake and that will cause it to get wet in the center. So I believe that is what's taking place. I'm just going to turn that stove off altogether. So that's why we see a hollow in the cake. I believe it's done, because I can see it pulling away from the sides the way you might like it to. So what I have to do now is give it a few minutes to cool off. I think I'll take the whole thing down off. I'm gonna transfer this to the ground here, and then I'm gonna put my kettle on so that I can have a cup of coffee. By the time my coffee's ready, the cake should be cool enough to Serve. Let's turn this on. I'm not even going to crank that up because it can crank. But there is my X kettle going back on top of that Campy Moon XD2F stove. Won't take very long. When that comes to a boil, I'll turn it off and I'll pour myself some coffee. So the nice thing about using silicone is that, and especially the shape of these bowls and mugs, is that they're wider at the top. So if I push down on the outside, usually it releases from the sides of the cake itself or whatever it is you're cooking like that. So really all I should have to do right now, hopefully it didn't stick to the bottom, is turn it upside down and it should pop out. Is it going to pop out? Yep, there you go. All right, that was pretty clean. So there is my peanut butter loaf. It's still quite warm but it is ready. But what I'll do is I'll reposition the camera so that I can show you the cake and have coffee at the same time. Peanut butter cake is ready. It is cooked. It looks wonderful. But the proof is in cutting it open and showing you what it looks like on the inside. So I'll cut a wedge out of it. So light, so delicate. Let me just close the knife up and then I'll bring it up to the camera so that you can see, oh yeah. Can you see that? Look, at, look inside the cake there. There, look. So delicate, so light. Mmm, so moist. I'd hesitate to call this a bread in the sense that you can make sandwiches with it. It's not a bannock, it it's much lighter. It's more like a muffin. It's very much like a mug cake. If you've made mug cakes at all, I'm eating a mug cake for all intents and purposes. Oh, it's getting a little breezy here. Hopefully you're not uh, having too much wind noise. So a couple things I could have done with that is I could have added cocoa powder and chocolate chips to give it a 
peanut butter chocolate or chocolate peanut butter flavor. I've done that with other mug cakes, not with this recipe, but it would be uh, uh, the same principle. Uh, Sugar-free chocolate chips, of course. And uh, what else? Oh, a little bit of vanilla would have added flavor to this. Alternatively, you could have put in some other spices like cinnamon, different things. I guess it really is up to your imagination how you would like to doctor this up, but the basic principle of using peanut butter and eggs and baking powder to create the cake uh, is the same. And by the way, you can use other nut butters. Uh, it will, they will work out. So almond butter, whatever else that you can, seed butters, whatever else you can lay your hands on, they all work well for this. Peanut butter is just convenient, inexpensive, and I like it. I like the flavor of it. So, so easy to do. Took 25 minutes of steam baking. Mm. Don't forget the coffee. <laughs> Rampage coffee. Love it. Love it. Okay. Simple dessert recipe. If you have any questions on how I made this, how it can be modified, if you have any suggestions on what you would do to change the recipe up or how you might change the way you cook it, put them all in the comments section below. If you have any other ideas you would like me to try out here in the woods, put those in the comments section below. If you try this, I'd be interested in hearing your results. I think you will be impressed. Again, it's just so easy. Yes, you can cook this at home, especially if you want to get extra uh, hints on how to do it. You can watch this, the video. I'll put the link in the video description below. Okay, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.